portacolor. Yeah, go ahead, take it off. What's hidden in the warehouses of LA? Okay. Let's bring it over here. He's going to bring it down to So here. the goal is to lift this 100 pound zenith. You're not going to lift it. What you're going to do is you're going to bring it down here and drop it slowly onto here. I'll lift it. You won't have to. I know. I brought home as many of these as I could because he is selling off uh, the collection because he's moving out of the building. Um, this is a friend of mine, fellow collector. Uh, we're gonna go through and we're gonna triage these sets and triage is generally a term, a medical term, when you have a bunch of wounded people coming into a hospital, you assess who could make it and who could not and you focus on the ones that could make it. That's a general summary, and that's what I'm going to do today. I got a really interesting RCA here. This is like a CTC 36 color, but it's not. I could tell just by looking in the back. So we're going to get this one open first. It's like mostly solid state. All I'm going to do is open them up, uh, do a quick analysis. We'll look it over. We'll test the CRT, and we'll mark on the front with paint if the CRT is good or not. And then I need to make room somewhere in the garage and get these stashed for future videos on each one. Because these are all, to me, these are all cool sets. This is one of my favorite sets right here. Zenith Tube, this is a remote set, but Zenith Tube uh, all metal color tabletop. So I got several of those. I got I got a bunch of interesting stuff, so I'm gonna just let's get into it. And these sets are all filthy. They've been sitting up on top of a office in a warehouse for probably since the late 1970s. So they're literally just covered with black dirt. Um, this is also going to be a shaky, fast-moving video. Like I said, I'm just going to triage them. Let's find out what they are. This is the first one. It's an RCA. I like this set. These are very hard to find these days. Look at this. So, I don't know if things changed in LA, but now 2 is CBS, 4 is NBC, and 7 is ABC. And it was, that's how it was before digital switch over. Wow, this thing is rusty. Man, I wish this was not rusty. So it looks like the IF is solid state. It looks like, look at the little hybrid plug-in module there. Ooh. Quality cars for quality people. Guess making it louder makes it better. So what is this, a CTC what? Model JR. JR956W. According to this, it is a CTC53. CTC53 chassis. This is possibly one of the only ones in existence in the entire world at this point. Thirty six MC six. This has that weird flyback that points back. It looks weird. Yeah, series string looks kind of high hour. Solid state IF. Mostly solid state. Well, mostly is in one, two, three, like four transistors on the deflection board. 
I wonder if this is one of those, well I'm sure it is, low focus voltage super soft picture CRTs. When I, I, I've never really noticed it, but I've been told that when these CR, these low focus voltage tubes get weak, they um, keep in mind this set has been sitting since the 70s. I bet this would wake up. We'll know. We'll we'll learn that as we get into more of these and start testing more of them. I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes. Let's see where our screens are set. Red's almost all the way up. Green's almost all the way up. Blue's almost all the way up. Which one of these is bias? This does not have a bias pot on the back, which I'd like to check how high that is. Maybe this chassis does not use one. Um, so with the screens all the way up and no bias pot, I want to say that it's on the tired side, but it's kind of waking up here. I'll give it a few more minutes. Spending a little extra time on this one because what the huh? This is sort of interesting. It uses one tube in the tuner, an RF amp. And it's not a new Vista. You would think they'd use a new Vista there. That is very bizarre. Um, the CRT is slowly creeping up. I'm not going to rejuvenate these. Uh, I, I would say this one is okay. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just okay. Marginal. Next. This is a Magnavox solid state. Uh, I grabbed this because we don't work on too many Magnavoxes on this channel and we really don't work on many solid state black and white sets. 1979. I assume this is made in the United States. Oh, 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 manufactured in Taiwan, ROC. Soon to be C, with not no R-O or no T in front of it. Well, that's a bit of a disappointment. This one immediately gets knocked way to the bottom of the repair, resurrection, whatever you want to call it, list. I mean, even though it's very different from what we usually work on, you can tell it's high hour. Look at the fuzz growing on the high voltage area. Look at the spoogy discharge wow that sucks yeah this is high hour high voltage attracts dust uh, this has got a lot of it cigarette lovers set what the hell I got this turned all the way down is this like some ultra low current type thing why am I why am I at eight volts? What the Yeah, it's cranking along. So yeah, I mean sort of as expected, we start to get some activity around 8 volts. This thing is garbage. I should probably just put this in the trash can right now. Save myself the space. This is... 
is very weak. Let's get the other tester on it with, uh, where I can actually look up the appropriate number with separate settings. Yeah, this thing is roached. This thing is spent. But, you know, that's what we would expect by just looking at the overall picture. I mean, you, you almost don't need a tester when you see something baked like this. I wonder if any more of these exist in the world. The lighting is going to start to suck. I don't do videos in the sun usually, but whatever. This is a Zenith Space Command. 300 black and white, so this is a remote set with the the clicker, the jingle your keys type clicker. Yeah, this is the level of dirt that was on this stuff. This is a power transformer set. These were always a, a cut above. Look at the Z on the IF transformer. Uh, that's the remote module there. These are the channel lockouts on the tuner. Let's see, can we get a chassis number on this? Uh, 16K36, it looks like. Chassis 16K36. Now look at the... Uh, it's not something we see often in TVs, but a, a, a rectifier bulb with uh, a nipple, evacuation nipple on the top. What's the number on that thing? That's a rare tube. Five BC3, I don't know. Anyway, that's, that's different. All right, we ready for disappointment? 19 CXP4, this uses a little bit of a different uh, socket arrangement. Geez, it started to come up there and then it took a dump on me. What happened? What was that all about? It like started to look healthy, then it died. What kind of crap is that? Maybe it just needs the cigarette clusters burn out of it. Look at that, it goes almost all the way up. Okay, come on back down. Jordan Pierce said these Rollin tubes, if that's what this is, never die. I guess maybe he's right. That's strong. This this is what it should look like. Next. God, these things are dirty. This is a Packard Bell. This must be right at the end of Packard Bell. Although that's the old symbol, right? And let's see. The antenna on the side. Why do we have multi-wires coming out of this thing? What is this about? Uh, looks like the antennas were originally here. They were busted. They bought an aftermarket add-on. Yeah, baby, just drill holes right in the side of it. Archer, so that was Radio Shack. Just drill holes in the side of it and screw it to the side. Uh, what does it say Philco on the back here? Or maybe this is a Philco. Oh, Philco Corp. Oh, we're riding the short bus today. Why did I think this was Packard Bell? 
guess the logo on the front. Anyway, we have multi multi cords coming out of this. Can look at that. I guess maybe that is a Philco logo. All right. How do we open this? Okay, I have. I think it looks like maybe they cut the wires off the back of the interlock and put in a sec separate power cord. Okay, uh, multi bulb vacuum bulb, cool bulb, Philco cool bulb vacuum bulbs. Genuine cool bulb. Wow, it looks like all original genuine cool bulb vacuum bulbs. Okay, let's check the picture bulb. Oops. That thing broke off. Oops. Now I had to stop myself here. I was getting ready to plug this Beltron on here, and I, I thought to myself, that almost looks like the Predictor CRT. I better make sure that's not the 2.6 volt. CRT um, Yeah, almost caught myself there. See do we have a chassis number here that we can read? Not really um, Oh, it says right on it 6.3 volt 450 milliamps, okay good Almost. Uh uh uh, where are the big girls at? Ah, this picture bulb is good. Good picture bulb. Philco is a model 2202440. And it is uh, really broken and things are cut off and things are added on and yes. I guess it could be cleaned up and fixed. Uh, the CRT's good. Okay, this is a Philco courier. Philco Courier. This is a General Electric. Why did I bring this junk home? Buttons and knobs are on top. Why? Man, it is dirty. My experience is, I can point here, my experience is on sets like this, General Electric. There is an electrolytic, a small electrolytic in the boost section that always shorts and causes no high voltage. Every single General Electric set I have worked on that little electrolytic has been shorted. See? General Electric. And what's interesting is this looks old, but then you open it up and it's all compactrons and this is a power transformer set five u4 for maximum energy consumption and heat generation this doesn't look high hour but the picture bulb doctor will give us a better than what it looks like assessment eh, looks can be deceiving I'll give it a few minutes well, I guess I missed the Viagra moment there because she popped right up. Um, 
I walked over to get something else out of the car and I came back and this thing is full smack at one one mil. I'm gonna go down to five volts here. I walked over there and I pulled this out and uh, this is a little RCA RCA Victor AM FM clock radio and I grabbed a couple um, clock radios or radios from my friend's shop where I got these sets just because I like to do radio repairs every now and then so 5 volts so this is a very happy TV very happy I wonder this one of these is probably the chassis on this LX what is that SW maybe GE uses chassis numbers like that, just like that. They're two letters, and unfortunately, the tuner cover is missing. That sucks. RCA Victor, this is a different era. I guess it would be considered a little bit more desirable just with the general public. Uh, these are like 1950s. Probably every kitchen in America had one of these in the 1950s. There was a GE model of this, of course, a hot point model than this. It's always nice when you open it up and you got a bag of parts inside. Look at the dust. Eh. We'll save that for... Eh, maybe we won't. Oh, the... High voltage bulb is missing. Um, that's not good. Okay, here we go. I, I'm kind of expecting this to be spent. I just am, but you know, you just never know until you actually make it happen. Okay, well that's doing what that's doing. Let me open this bag up and see if we have any clues in here. All right, well, what we have in here, this almost looks like an IF can. Is that what this is? This looks like an IF can that goes over a circuit board almost. So maybe this goes on the back of the chassis. And then we got this and we got the hardware. I'm not quite sure what this is. Looks like a connector. Oh! So this this set was not condemned because the CRT was weak. It was condemned because it's got other problems that somebody could not sort out or did not want to spend the money to fix. Okay, what is this? A KCS what? It is a KCS 102. Come on. KCS 102B. So this must be the one right after the KCS 100, the little shoebox set. Okay, Magnavox Park Avenue radio. I grabbed this because you can't hear the words Park Avenue and not think of Grandpa's crappy nanny state Buick with the automatic self-locking doors and headlights that you can't turn off and all the other ridiculous nanny state old people babysitting electronic garbage. This right here has got to be one of my personally most desired sets. Uh, only a few years earlier with the all-metal cabinet in this size that was not hybrid. I believe this has like integrated circuit color demodulation or something. We're going to get it open, but 
This is a Zenith. I don't know what these were, late 60s, early 70s. And yeah, this has the striped uh, logo, which I think that means Black Matrix CRT. Is that what that means? Like the chroma color. Anyway, these are... Yeah, I'd, I'd rather have the one with the controls underneath and this junk here not at the top. But all metal. This is plastic. In this size, what is a 15? We'll start under here. The beautiful handcrafted chassis. This is a chassis 14CC16. A 14 tube chassis. I always love these. I don't know why. Just the, the people that built them, the boring, monotonous assembly line, just putting the same stupid part in the same place over and over and over and over. And probably not com complaining and demanding a living wage while doing it. Okay. Focus divider resistor, those go bad a lot. Um, there is the Chroma D mod I see right there. That little, that's a what does the color on these. So, yeah, I'd be ultimate to have the all tube version of this. I mean, imagine the heat concentration of another eight tubes packed in this little area. Huh? Here come the Blamby Lance. Gotta have the Blamby Lance in every single video now. Oh, look at this. Oh. That yep, multi Blamby Lance. Okay, this is good. This is strong. Let's go to five volts. Yeah, this is this is this is decent. The Blambulance be going to haul in another adverse reaction case. So series string, except that little transformer right there is probably for the CRT or maybe for the damper. And what they do is on the secondary of that, they put 280 volts or 300 volts DC on the secondary so that the potential between the filament and the cathode of the damper tube is not the full voltage if that makes sense you float the filament up so that it's closer to the potential of the cathode tube that way it doesn't burn through and that's why you use a separate transformer for the damper or you use a separate winding on the transformer for the damper and I think I am wrong here because this is a 19 volt damper. So I would think if they were going to do a transformer, they'd do a 6 volt. So maybe they're running the CRT on a uh, separate transformer. 16 VATP22. Here's another radio. Maybe this cabinet is homemade. You know, it's so hideous. Maybe this cabinet is homemade. Um, it's painted brown with like interior um, latex, probably lead based. Um, this is T 
TRF. Uh, it's awfully nice if it's homemade with the little corner blocks there. Nah, this is not homemade. Scratch that. It's a model 550. Who who is a model 550? That would be uh, is it a Philco model 550 TRF set? Love that modern cheesy ass knob on there because someone lost the bezel thing. Who makes this? I can't. Ward's Airline, Montgomery Ward's Airline, model 550. Wow. I don't know if you can see that, but it is a Ward's Airline. Well, what a dinosaur, man. That'll make a great resurrection right there. Admiral uh, Instant Play. I believe I've done one of these on this channel. Not much to them, they usually work. Crack solder joints. Instant play could mean it's dead, but not always. Model 21897PM. I don't know, it's a chassis number. Model chassis number TH41A. It's actually. Is this Chinese? Taiwan? It's got a crack in it. Yeah, we did do one of these. I remember the tube was bad, and the tube is in that pipe. Um, air pain. No helicopter. I, I oh, 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 calm down there. Oh, there she goes. I yeah, that's what I expect. Bang. So yeah, she's she's good. Now the other one I had of this. Let me see. Is this the same? The horizontal. No, this one's a little different. The other one I had of this, the, I could not get the horizontal oscillator to reliably start. And I never did figure it out. It says made in USA right there. The other one was definitely Taiwan. So this, I think this is a keeper here, I do. And maybe the Taiwan one needs to go eol -age. So this right here is a packing tip for your front seat, trying to maximize TV space. You can easily, easily get four to five sets in the front seat of a small car. I am going to save the all metal space command for later. Uh, let's try the ones in the front seat. RCA Victor kind of a generic set basic you just call this TV that's what this is this is just a TV RCA Victor um, all channel Wow look at the disintegrating yoke look at that that plastic failure What is this? A KCS 148A. KCS 148A. Original RCA electron picture bulb. Uh, isn't Jordan Peer working on one of these right now? This looks familiar. Huh. I believe he is, actually. I will make send picture to him for torture. I think he just found his on the street. You know, RCA made so many of these black and whites in this configuration that people are still finding them on the street 60 years later.
oh there we go well I get all excited and then it drops down here she comes here she comes I'm gonna give it a few minutes um, I'm curious to see how the video looks in the sunlight I don't like working in the sunlight curious to see how the video looks versus in fact I think on his the doubler capacitor was shorted the one in cardboard there and it blew the circuit breaker This is what I would call marginal. Okay, it'll produce a picture. It's worth resurrecting. It's not going to light the neighborhood up with brightness or clarity. But, you know, it's it's marginal. Let's say this one's okay. This is a Dumont Safari. And I'll tell you, this looks a lot like a GE we resurrected. Um, yeah, Dumont Safari, this really looks like GE to me. Yeah, this just smells like GE. I don't know, let's get it open and let's see. Why do I have the song Adhesive Love by Stone Temple Pilots stuck in my head all of a sudden from looking at this set? Uh... Is this an Emerson? Who made this? This is not GE. I don't think. This looks familiar to me. In fact, I think I know where that set is. Power transformer set. Okay, here's a set I'm thinking of. This was a desert find and who made this? This is an Emerson, but this look, this, does it have the knobs? It does, it has the knobs on the top, just like that one. And yeah, this is an Emerson. So is that one an Emerson? This was a deep desert find, and it had a weak CRT, but it just worked. Okay, Dumont CRT. It is an Emerson. It's got an Emerson CRT in it. So it's an Emerson rebadged Dumont. It's kind of like pork chow mein rebadged to Crosley. Look at that. Pegged. This is. Does it have the original tubes in it? Wow, it has the original. Can we see that? It has the original Emerson 5U4. It has a GE horizontal output tube. Low hour. Very low hour set. Safari P49 P02. Safari 49P02. Emerson. Alright, here's another Zenith. This it's like identical to the other one, the 14CC16. So this one the handle is broken off on. I'm going to put a number two on this one. Okay. That way we knows. Space Command 100. This one is not a space command, so that one is different. Basically the same set as the other one, except this is a remote set, being a space command. And here's the remote module right here. And there are the lockouts, those pink things. But there's something a little bit cool about this set. This has all original Zenith tubes in it. All original Zenith tubes, including the damper and the horizontal output 20 LF6 so I'm going to say this is an extremely low hour set like I think I was the first one to open this I don't think this has ever been opened before let's see if my suspicion is real here
Boy, man, where the blue at? That's kind of weird. That is bizarre behavior. Yeah, this set is this set is new. This set's like no hours on this thing. Yeah, it's dirty as hell because of where it was, but this set's like new. 12 B9C16. 12 B9C16. Sometimes they would put silicone on these. Well, wait, is that a replacement fuse? Maybe not. It's got the original bell fuses in it. Wow. Let's turn this voltage down here. It's like four volts. Yeah, blue is a little bit tired. It's like three volts. Interesting. N E W. New. Plus, plus, plus. This is sort of a radio TV phone on it special type of radio. Take a look at our next radio. And these are just for repair resurrection videos. Nothing decent to listen to anyway or watch. I wonder who made this one. This looks like it's got those one volt octal tubes in it, like the 3Q4 type tubes. Looks like Standard Broadcast made this radio. Don't know what model it is, but apparently it's uh, made by Standard Broadcast. The next TV is a little Zenith. It's a 9 inch or 12 inch. I like these. These are like the little color ones that I like. The, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, what can go bad on these? You know, horizontal phase detector, selenium diode, capacitors, uh, tubes. I don't think the CRTs ever wear out on these, do they? All original Zenith tubes. Oh no, there's an RCA back there. Uh, horizontal output dampers original. Look at the cute little electrolytic. Isn't that cute? Um, same, you know, same construction style as the chaotic but beautiful construction style is a bigger one. I would expect nothing but happiness out of this but let's let's prove that today anybody check one two Give that a that's kind of disappointing. Oh, what's going on there? Do we got a do we got a bad connection here? It's not happy, is it? Let's give that a minute. I would have expected that to peg the meter with a well, you know what? It might have some hours on it. Look at the look at the fuzz there attracted to the high voltage. Look at that. Yeah, this this might 
This might have some hours on it. Oops. Uh, actually, it looks like something was replaced there. The diode, maybe? Rectifier? Yeah, these go bad in these. This double diode, you just replace that with two small signal diodes. The um, integrators go bad. I've covered that in previous videos. These three-legged things that separate the uh, sink. Yeah. So I bring the um, voltage up a little bit and it stupid thing is coming unglued. Let's go back down to six volts here and see what happens. Seems okay, maybe it just needs to be, eh, I don't know. It's tired. It would work, it would produce a picture, but, and it might wake up. Remember, these have been sitting since the 70s, but it's tired. Chassis is a 13M15, 13M15. High hour. This one gets it just okay. Eh, it's okay. But it's all channel. Okay, next is the all metal Zenith hybrid tabletop. And this is one of the ones with the drop down door with the controls. This is a remote set Space Command 300. All metal. Nothing here to burn. This thing would, it's all metal and glass. The whole thing would be untouched by a nuke. Video be a warning to everyone who's downloaded this insidious app. And join me as we cover the raw and unfiltered truth behind TikTok. So is this, this is mostly all Xena tubes also. A question. Do you never want to be bored again? Do you want fame? to not feel left out. For success to come sooner, this is how it begins. Through tapping into your innate biological desires, TikTok has been able to achieve three billion downloads. But behind our addiction to this app is something sinister. Because in the back of your- Where's the chroma demodulation? Someone has transformed a lip syncing app for teens into the greatest cyber threat in human history. So the question is, who? Well, to answer this, we need to go back to 2012. Back in 2012, Vine was the closest thing you'd get to TikTok. And whilst Vine was kind of big, most people formed for Facebook and to create the most powerful... Okay, let's see what we got here. ...an AI system more advanced than anything seen before it. This was no accident. In this time, the Chinese government had a strong desire to make AI a priority in the race for global tech dominance. But why was China so obsessed with AI? Why was the Chinese government so involved with working with this unknown tech company? To answer this, let's take a quick look at what ByteDance's AI technology was capable of. On this new site, there wouldn't be a curated feed or editors controlling the flow of information. Headlines instead use specially made AI algorithms to select and push the news robotically, with the company never having to hire a single reporter or editor. To test this highly developed AI system, ByteDance released the app to the China market. And almost immediately, the algorithm worked its magic. In a matter of months, headlines became extremely popular in China, with the site gaining 10 million users in just three months. There was only one issue. All content that wasn't aligned with the government's core socialist values would be an equal offense, which meant there would have to be at least one editor. That's why I've been so fast to publish a statement thanking the state for its supervision. It's not all the way up. It's the first ever AI-generated propaganda machine. It was the embryonic site for much darker things to come. Huh. Let me let it sit for a minute. So, this is a 16Z8C19. 
And yeah, it's got a row of transistors right there. But the color demod is done with tubes. This is very cool. And if you, if you can hear this in the background, somebody sent me this and said that it really gave them chills. TikTok is worse than you thought. I realized it was playing in the background. I guess I've been out here looking at these TVs for like three hours, four hours. You start doing something different. So the, the powers come up. Emissions have come up. Here's the remote module. Different volume settings. I wonder what my social credit score is. It's probably pretty low, I would imagine. Anyone could post some content and go viral the next day. Because of that, Gen Z rushed to it, allured by the prospects of fame, attention, and quick dopamine hits. Using its AI technology to learn how to create the most addictive user interface possible. I have not installed this. There are several core psychological techniques used to addict you. Okay, next. Sony. This is a 17 inch Trinitron. Let's check this out. These are a pain in the ass when they don't work. This sucker looks high hour. Also looks like it's had some caps replaced. We got missing screws. I wonder if the flyback core is broken in this that that uh, holder that holds the flyback together huh well wow, this board is cracked that's why it's all glued how is that possible how does this get cracked and broken look at it's cracked there What the hell happened to this? Did somebody throw this off of a building or something? I don't know if this is the right adapter. The book is wrong. The book says adapter 20. Adapter 20 is not even close. Um, the filament did start conducting. So let's see. Yeah, this looks like the right socket. It's kind of weird how it goes down and then comes back up. Let's go to cut off. I mean, it looks, it looks right. Looks like the socket's working. Emission, red, green, blue. This switch is falling apart on this thing. Yeah, it seems good. Man, a high hour CRT, you would think it would not. Let's go down on the voltage a little bit. Um, let's take it down to there.
What the hell was going on with the switch? Seems okay. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, someone's replaced a bunch of these caps in here. But what I'm curious about is... Is this thing in the... that holds a flyback broken, and it does not seem like it is. That one's brass. The ones that have been broken have been steel. That's interesting. So maybe this is marginal. This is insane. This is just the sets that we've gone through so far. And there's several more of them. This is just totally insane. This is like a year's worth of resurrections right here. Okay, there's really no reason to even check this one, but I'm going to. This is a General Electric Portacolor, and I have a video coming up on repairing one of these. It's full of tin whiskers, which should be a good educational edu experience. All right, so these are junk. Um, they're popular because they're small and light, but they're junk. Is this an H4? It sure is. This is not the same one that you're going to see in the tin whisker video. Um, let's check the tube on it. These have three screws in the front, screws in the back. I remember the dust. The dust is one thing, the fur is another. So it looks like it's got most of the original tubes. Looks like it's even got the original. But the fuzz on that capacitor, that's not just dust, that's, that's high voltage attracted dust. Yeah, these are junk. Even when brand new, they're junk. Interesting, this appears that it takes a special CRT socket. Um, what is this CRT? I can't read that. It looks like it just says LWP22 or IWP22, but I got the schematic here because I was just working on the other one. Let's see what it is. 11WP22. Yeah, I guess that's what that says. Wow, that's bad. It's a 13.8 volt filament. Bias is B. Socket is number 10. So yeah, it takes something special. I guess if you didn't know that and only had the Beltron, you'd think the filament's open. It's a filament set. We gotta go to like 12 volts. Uh, let's see, we wanted bias B too. Filament set, let's go up here to 12 volts. So you're right about there. Yeah, they're glowing. Can see them through the dust. Okay, shorts cut off. Emission. Well, we ain't having none of that, are we? And I'm at 13.8 volts here. Pretty close. It's jumping around. The sockets are kind of crappy. Who knows, maybe the line voltage is jumping around. Blue, green, red. Yeah, I think these switches are dirty.
let me uh, go back to cutoff or gun balance. I'll let it sit for a while. I don't know, it seems like it's woken up now. That's the cutoff. Seems like it's come up. I don't know. I, this, you know, all that really goes wrong with these are the capacitors, these cap capacitors. And the thing is, I call these junk because they don't have a good picture. In fact, this thing has all original tubes in it. They're all the blue compactrons. But the thing is, is because they're built to a price and they're so simple, they're easy to fix and they can be reliable. It's all disc capacitors. Okay, one more today. And then we'll maybe, I think there are a couple more, but I moved them. Maybe we'll do those before I finish this video up. Um, this is a little Sears, and these were either made by Sanyo or to Toshiba. The reason why I grabbed this is because I had one of these. Whitney Houston for life, y'all. Uh, more cocaine, please. Where was I? Um... Uh, kind of lost it there when the car went down the street like 300 feet away and I could hear Whitney Houston. Now I'm going to have that stuck in my head. Um, I had one of these found in the desert. I did a complete recap on it. Spent a ton of time and money. And it turned out one of the IF transformers was ruined like someone screwdrivered it. And whatever. So I grabbed this. I'm wondering if this is the same same thing. Let me take it apart, we'll see. This one is Sanyo. 230 DB4. Look at look at all those green capacitors. Wow. Talk about get your recap on. Is it all one board? Where's the IF at? There must be another board hidden in here somewhere. 230DB4. It's another 12.6 volt tube. I can't see this being bad. Um, is it possible to put enough hours on a set this small to really... Maybe it is. Oh, there we go. The socket just wasn't on. Yeah, look at the cutoff on this. It's like new. Yeah, people would buy these or people would get these for Christmas or they'd get these as gifts. And they just wouldn't use them. You know, it just went in the closet. doesn't have any hours on it. Too small. It's a novelty. Right now, i got to say, I think my top picks are definitely this one. The new... Zenith and the RCA. Definitely want to get into that RCA. The rest of these next year, the year after that, I'm in no hurry. I got so much stuff to do videos on, but definitely that RCA, I'm hot for that sucker. I don't know why. Here's the other 17 inch Trinitron. We'll call this one number two. Uh, the previous one had that cracked board on the CRT. I'm going to pull both of them out and I'm going to do a comparison. I've got the other CRT tester here that I believe I have the right adapter for. We'll look it up and see. I will say this one looks high hour too because the the socket just fell apart, the part of the socket on the CRT. Maybe you can post your experience in the comments. Most of the comments now do seem to go into the withheld for review folder, but I will, I look at them every so many hours and approve them. I believe in everybody having their say, no matter what their opinion is, if it agrees with me or not.
So it looks like, this is weird, it looks like uh, red is dead. weird there's no difference between cutoff and emissions you know what, let me grab the other one of these trinitrons and pop the back off of it well while I was taking this one apart this one seems to have woken up it's weird yeah again they've been sitting since the 70s so whatever So, these Sonys really need to have a strong tube to produce a decent picture. So, this, it might work, but these are high hours. Anyway, going back to my unwelcome rant, what I was saying, I was talking to a friend of mine about his car. And he was saying he has this, like, 80s Lincoln. And he was saying, you know, sometimes this thing just doesn't run right, and I can't seem to figure it out. Sometimes it, the power is lacking. Sometimes it just doesn't run right. And I said to him, what have you... That's an 80s car, and some of those Fords did have a few electrolytics in them. Have you tried pulling the computer brain apart and just looking at the electrolytics because you get a automotive computer that has bad um, you know electrolytics in it low ESR they leak or whatever then the computer the brain doesn't make good decisions it's it, it doesn't make the right calculations it screws up and so he pulls it apart and he says wow I got an electrolytic here that the one of the leads is just eaten off of from the leakage I said, well there you go and I haven't had a follow-up on that but that's sort of like filling your filling your human brain with little blood clots it just you notice it just doesn't work quite as well as it used to it starts making weird decisions it starts, your body starts misfiring. Because you've uh, cut off the blood and oxygen flow to certain parts of the central processing unit. So this one is a lot stronger. This is the first one we tested. So even though the board on this one is cracked and glued together with silicone it's still stronger than this one and this might come up I'll let it sit for a minute here's the next one we'll check this is a 17er and uh, I tell you this dust is uh, a severe irritant really um, I was wearing a P100 mask when I picked these sets. You know what, I need to just shut up. This is the next one we'll test. This is a 2.68 volt CRT. It's got a crack in it, but you know, I can probably fill that with some ramen noodles and egg paste, right? So back to this, this is the Sony with the glue on the board. This one actually woke up real nice. So let's go to cutoff. Uh, look at the cutoff on this thing. Okay, here's back to the second one again. So this is the cutoff. You know, these are both, these are both waking up real nice, except this one is not quite as nice as the other one. So you bring this up. Just one small, one small notch. This just tests the consistency of the cathode, right, by applying a negative voltage. So yeah, this one is not as nice. This one, this one is strong. I'm gonna say this one is marginal. I should see if that thing is cra that thing is broken on the flyback. Ah, this one, it's broken. 
you can see it right there. I believe that is what is causing these sets to blow up is when that bolt breaks. I covered that in a previous video. We checked it in this one, but I believe that that is a bad flyback. Now whether or not that can be replaced is still to be determined. Um, parts like that are not readily available for, for sets from the 70s. Ah, Philco 17er. These share a lot of parts in common with the Predictas, so these are popular to be scrapped and parted out for saving a Predicta. Um, I always wanted one of these and I couldn't find one. Now I got several of them. And they're junk. They're like the Predictas. They, they're they uh, all style and no quality. Um, Pneumatic 17 or 3. This is in pretty bad shape. Let's check the CRT. These have a low voltage filament CRT that doesn't last very long. But again, this is like a junk kitchen set. Um, yeah, maybe I could just go, um, um, um. Um, okay, so this is, what is one of the ones that had the squeeze bulb hand pump thing to change the channel. So this hose here, was it vacuum? I think, no, it's a squeeze bulb, so it puts a little bit of air pressure here. It has a hose, you run it to your chair, and then you can squeeze it, and it pushes this and changes the channel. See that? It rototwebulates the Zwiebler Easer. So, uh, these are junk. They have these couplets in them they always need to replace. Uh, yeah, I'm really grunting and groaning this morning. Look at this bodge job capacitor replacement right here. Here, 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 uh, here, uh, here, uh, uh, here, uh, uh. So we look at this one here, uh, uh, and we see it's 2.68 volts, 450 milliamps. You have to get that right or else you blow it sky high. Uh, uh. So 2.68, I can't quite get 2.68. Um, one is too high, the other is too low. Ooh, do we have cutoff? We have cutoff. Wow, another one of these with a, a, a decent, a decent tube. Shaky, shaky. Yeah, look at that. That is stimulative. And I'm not even at 2.6. I believe that... Let me see. If I turn this all the way down and then go to 3, then I'm over. Well, let's see how it looks up there. Pegged. This strong, it's 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 good. It's good. I wouldn't say it's like blow me off the charts strong, but it's good. Wow, another one of these with a good tube. Now these these need a lot of work. They always need a lot of work. They they need to be recapped. All the electrolytics they need usually need these couplets rebuilt. They have crappy tube sockets. Um, they have all the same problem predictors have. It is basically a predictor in a different case. So how about this? No, we are not going to open this up. We are not going to open this up, and we are not going to test the CRT. But. I'll tell you what's going to happen to this in the future. Well, maybe I won't tell you what's going to happen to this in the future. But what I will tell you is it will probably result in it working for just a short period of time. Let's get in on that right there. Oh, yeah, dial it in nice and clear.
So, see if it turns on and works. It's a little damp right now. When I plugged it in, I heard a switching mode supply start up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Channel. Yeah, this is gonna go boom, boom. These burn really good too. Anything that's a product of like Disney or Crosley burns really good. I mean, these are just like a solid form of raw hydrocarbon. Hey, do I do I have a new viral video here? Has everybody got their dopamine release going on? I tell you, you go get your third booster, your fourth booster, your eighth booster, come home and just watch this and just rock out on those seizures. Okay, one more after this. Philco Ford. I remember when you could buy these at the swap meet in the 80s, 80, late 80s, early 90s for $5. Did I say that already in this video? Philco Ford. Little dime store, black and white, probably made in Taiwan. T-A-I-W-A-N. Soon to be CCP. I know I've said that in this video. Doesn't say where it's made. Made of high impact plastic. I wonder if this is like the one I had growing up. Mine was branded Sharp. No, this is different. Similar but different. Philco made in Taiwan. Philco Cool Chassis TV with extra dog hair. Or cat fur. Yeah, this is looks Japanese built. 38 HE7. These work these work really well. I had something very similar to this growing up. Um, mine is branded sharp. I still have it. If it tells us what the vacuum, picture filled vacuum uh, bulb is, the uh, propaganda bulb. The vacuum filled propaganda interface bulb, 12BUP4. Can we test the propaganda bulb without the airplane seeing the dog fur? Filament set. I need to plug it in. Okay, 6.3. Let us go to 6. I have a feeling this is going to be good. This is another one of those bathroom slash kitchen TVs. Look at the cutoff. It just pegs it. Look at that. Look at the emissions. Absolutely pegged. Bring the cutoff down. Yeah, it's like new. This is like a zero hour set. Philco Ford with missing knobs. Zero hour set with CRT that pegs the tester. Okay, so the, not many sets get this designation. N E W. New. This sucker is new. Too bad that knob is missing, and too bad the knobs are all 
corroded. I mean, I know you can get stuff chrome plated today. Sometimes I almost think it's worth it on some of this stuff. But then, of course, I think it's the plastics turning yellow, which, you know, all this stuff is rusty and corroded. It's too bad it wasn't kept in a climate controlled environment. Okay. Here's another one of these. This is the last one on the testing block. And again, these are popular. They, I guess they look a little bit like your 50 Chevy, right? They have that sort of forward-leaning uh, look. How, you know, this styling, the kind of tail fin styling. And they're metal. I don't even know who makes this one. The badge is missing off of it. The dust makes my nose run. This almost looks like RCA. This almost looks like RCA. If you recognize it, post it in the comments. Just say the last TV, the uh, what color is that? Red and white one. Or, you know, maybe it's Admiral. Admiral used those type of capacitors. See those black ones that are sticking straight up off the board? Those, Admiral used those. So who made this? I think we have a piece of communication stuck down in here. How the hell do I get to that? What is this? It's a service tag. With absolutely nothing worth anything on it. Um, I don't know. I don't know who makes it. I don't see a KCS number on it, so I guess it's probably not RCA. I don't know. Hopefully someone will comment, because I ain't going to spend not too much time on it. Let me open this. That looks good. Let's see if the propaganda bulb has any more mandates left in it. Maybe this set is a GE, because... Isn't that a, that's GE, and isn't that a date code of 56 right there? So that would probably, mm, is this a 50s? Maybe. Let's see. Shaky, shaky. We got cut off already. like another excellent it's like another excellent excellent CRT you know I think on the Philco I forgot to set the bias because if you set the bias on cutoff see what happens this sets the amount of negative voltage so let me look this up and see what the 17 AVP4. So the bias on this is supposed to be B. So yeah, this is a healthy this is a healthy set. This is a very another very healthy CRT. Wow. Good chance this thing just works. Probably, probably needs electrolytics. Everything needs electrolytics. Everything ever made needs electrolytics. When it come when your TV comes new off the showroom floor, it needs electrolytics. So I'm digging stuff out of the garage, trying to make room for all these new sets until I can get to them. I think we looked at this GE earlier, and isn't this the same? No, it is a little bit different. This one has this one has more knobs on the top. They are different. 
that one has two antennas but they're close might be the same chassis I also came across this item buried in the garage and uh, it sure looks cool it's kind of a boat anchor but it's probably more of a display piece but what is this thing like a radio and uh, radio analyst an old one because it's got RF IF low frequency and it looks like it goes up to 600 to 1600 kilocycles I mean this definitely looks like it's made for how many megahertz does it go up to 14 megahertz on the high frequency and it has DC volts RF IF volts volts AF volts amperes I guess that's for the watt meter although we know amps is not the same as watts because of power factor a Hickok model 156 I'll have to dig into that want this one of these days I mean this just it's all complete and it just looks cool I also dug out this poor soul and resurrecting this is going to be like a human that got run over by a tractor trailer and drug half a mile I mean this thing is and there's no there's no indication of who made it have to uh, spark up a radio TV phone on it or maybe one of those group pages and try and see who made this so I can get a uh, schematic on it shortwave and broadcast look at it's got KNX on it KFI KMT or probably from when this was new in the 40s it's got the knobs at least but the cabinet leaves something to be desired here's another one that I think years ago I made a video on this is a Packard Bell made by Panasonic uh, Matsushita and um, yeah I did a video on this right when I get started making videos which YouTube doesn't promote your own videos but I remember this very clearly this had bad leaky oil capacitors every single oil filled capacitor in this was bad and the picture it had would have you would have swore the CRT was bad but it was just a case of um, case of bad capacitors uh, this is a another Packard Bell I believe this set is new old stock uh, brand new we'll do a CRT test on this probably wrap the video up with that um, 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 yeah wow TVs man like totally dude okay let's wrap this up with this Teledyne Packard Bell is right at the end of Packard Bell's TV uh, run and I believe this was new old stock but it's been sitting in the garage and it's corroded a little bit but it's not too bad I need to find a way to do this silver striping but yeah made by General Electric made by GE uh, Packard Bell wasn't making I think hardly anything except consoles at this time early 70s Made by GE, Compactron set, a lot like, same color demodulation scheme as like a, uh, a portacolor. So let's pull the back off and check the CRT. I believe, like I said, new old stock. Show off the showroom floor of a TV store that a lot of the kids had visited down south here uh, in the past months. That is now probably a 
Chick-fil-A. Because everything that closes now becomes a Chick-fil-A. Wonder what's going on here with this tape. Look at this. Ta Teledyne Packard Bell. One, two, three, three, three. West Olympic Boulevard. Nine zero zero six four. I wonder what that is now. Probably an apartment complex or condos. All right. Yeah, it doesn't look low hour like I thought. Thought I had one of these around here that was new old stock, but. Never really seen that symbol before on a CRT, but okay. Yeah, see those two pots there, the two color balancing pots? That's typical GE. It looks like it has a Westinghouse. Eh, someone replaced the focus divider resistor. Let's see, does this have that lead based, lead jacketed tube in it? 3DS3 or whatever that is. Let's see. Most of these didn't have a cage on them. They just had a lead jacketed tube. Yeah, it does. It has the lead. Why does it look like someone sprayed this with, like, what, Corona dope? Yeah, it's weird. These sets are junk. This is the one that was all the way up, or this is the one that had the tape and it's all the way up. GE 18 VBHP 22. Yeah, this is not the gym I thought it was. Now let's test the uh, picture bulb. Yeah, I think these TVs are kind of junk. Cheapest thing that Packard Bell, Teledyne Packard Bell could source and put its name on. That's American made. I guess that's something. It is a strong CRT. Five volts, yeah, it's strong. It looks low hour. Look at that. All of them are pretty much over. Let's go down to four and a half volts. Yeah, it's young. Don't have many hours on it. Four volts. Blue is the weakest at 3.5 volts. Made expressly for a Taladine Packard Bell. Looks like the date code is 72. That's the vertical out right there. And the damper back there, which is a Sylvania. And over here is the horizontal out. Kind of cool. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up. That was a long look at a lot of TVs, radios. After this, they will even be VCRs. But uh, stuff to come in the future over the next several years, I guess. Uh, is it up to us to get them down? Yeah, I'll get them down. Or to uh, take, a, take, a, take a closer peek. Oh, there's a couple of plastic cabinets over here. Those are mine. Oh, okay. I... Oh, yeah. I've got almost identicals to those. Nice. Well, they're, you know, they're not exactly the same. Are you going to do all... Are you going to take all the plastic? 
Uh, no, I don't have room for it, but... Yeah, I don't either right now, but uh, that's another story. They're so easily damaged, though. What, the plastic? The plastic cabinets, I mean, you just have to handle them so carefully. But... This is insane. I'm, I'm just digging deeper in here. Sorry, I'm wearing a P100 mask. But, um... Documenting, yes. Okay. There's a rust-colored 17er back in here, and a, and a Fisher V8, a Fisher video cassette recorder. It is possible. I don't even know what that is. Magnavox. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, hang on a second. I am rolling. Rolling. So we have RCA, RCA, clock loading, uh, Betamax, 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 SL5100, what do we got here, JVC, VHS, probably early to mid 80s, okay, Yep, a little bit. The late. Fisher. See, the Fisher. Top loader can't even see where the VHS goes in. There's so much dirt and grime on there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do we got here? Reel to reel? Record player? Magnavox. What is it? The case looks too new for laser or too old for laser disc, but okay. Am I just like too stupid to figure out how to open it? It looks like it's split right there. <laughs> a record player. Okay, then here we have General Electric. Right. That's kind of rare. Keep hitting the sleeve. Look at, there's like spooge leaking out of whatever was on top of it. Nice. And here it is. You find is yours. That's a beauty. There you go. And then you that. Ready to fill your kitchen with smoke. 2.6 volt filament. Tell you a funny story about one of those. I had one out at the swap meet and it needed a filter, so I put a variac and cranked it up. Spread out, looked like new. Guy bought it, took it home, it looked like shit. The pictures all caved in. Brings it back next week, screaming. I stick it back on the variac. The variac's under the truck. It looks like new. We took it and I never saw him again. That's uh, unethical selling practices. Yeah, I know. Of vintage televisions. I should have tons of knobs. No, the old tube tester. Yeah, that's kind of cool too. You test them. Now this one's going to Arizona, right? This big one. Oh, look at that tubomatic. Yes. And where's the good lighting when you need to take pictures? Do you know what the beauty of this was? I bought all these things. They were all full of tubes. I scored. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I've I always wondered what happened to them. They had audio tubes, which is even better. God, the time you, you don't have yeah, good lighting. They have 12 AX7s in money. They're more valuable. Well, yeah, at this rate, at this current inflation. It's, 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 it's like, you know, within a five Oh, yeah. Right. I got rid of the 
There it is. Okay, we're rolling. No, get the top here. Yeah, you want some Windex? Back up a little bit. I'm going to get out of the light. The cloud, you know? It looks like a different set. There's actually a TV in here. Yeah. This is a Dumont. Yes. That, that I, I've never seen a Dumont. Okay. Oh, hey, it's wet there. Stop. What's this like? RCA, Victor. 630 TS. First mass produced post war set. Is that what it look? It's even got the back on it. Is that what it is? Is it a 630 TS? No, it's an 8T243. Got the RCA engineer. Sign of approval. I don't even know how to open it. What do we got here? The mystery box. Now, if there's a record player, maybe it would fold out. But no, it doesn't do that either. It's got to be a record player. What's it say? It doesn't say 1P2511. It's a magnet box. So it's almost got to be something like that. I wonder if this doesn't... Nope. No, I, I tried that. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it pull, It doesn't pull forward because it's yeah, flat. It no. It all, hey, no. Jess? Yeah. You got a flat screwdriver? Plug on. Okay. Wow. How to, how, how, how to stump, you know, oh, push, look at that. You're kidding. Boom. It says push? Yeah. That's it. Okay, forget it, Jess, we don't need it. <laughs> We're okay. <laughs> this is that spooge, like it's disintegrating, and this is what was on top of that TV. Hmm. Yeah, it's like oil. It's it's like some plastic is disintegrating. The land of plenty. With the strobing fluorescent lights.